We are laying the wood so that the fire can burn. We are laying the wood so that the fire can burn. Can you assist God? Can you help God to help you and position yourself correctly? Can we pray in the Holy Ghost again? Lord, we may be young, but you can choose to give us your eternal things. Hey! You may choose to give us your eternal things. Oh my God. You may choose to give us your eternal things. Lord, help us, Jesus. Help us. Help us. You may choose to give us your eternal things. Just like David, very young, but there was something in his hands. That even the elders do not have. And that led him to the palace. Lord, you may choose to give me your eternal things now. Yes, don't look at my age. Look at my alignment. You may choose to give me your eternal things. Let that be your request. Lord, you may choose to give me your eternal things. You may To become what? Life. That's what it is. So for those of you that your spirit are aligned, can we pray once again so that we can receive? The letters are still jumping. They are still jumping. Life is coming to let us. Life is coming to let us. Beyond the things that are written. In Jesus' name we are praying. If you want to, if you want to be blessed in God's presence, you must be as sensitive as you can to your environment. The reason a fish will die if brought out of water is because the fish is sensitive to environment. 
If I just come now and I'm just teaching, you will discover that at the end of the teaching, God will not profit. So our testimony will not become, there are many things, but you cannot receive them now. So we should be able to receive what God is willing to give. Are you with me? One more time. Can we lift our voices and open up your spirit? Help me, Jesus. I know I'm young, but Lord, you can choose to give me your eternal things. That's the body. That's the body. All right, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Pastor, for all the musicians. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. The dimensions of the Yes. Yes. I think when you go to the way of God, you said something that brought about a two person from the house. Okay. Okay. Number one, I wanted to ask how does one literally open the door of God? Praise the Lord. How do you open the door for God to come in? Praise the Lord. Because during the course of the teaching, I said something. I said, it is your opening that defines his coming. Are you with me? So if you don't open, it doesn't come in. So how do you open the door for him to come in? Now, the word of the Lord will never leave us confused. The Bible says, when you hear the word, harden not your what? Your heart. One of the ways to open the door for him to come in is to ensure that your heart is not hardened towards the word of God. And I told us in one of my teachings, not here, I said, the preachings of the ministers of God are the knockings of Jesus at your door. So as the word of the Lord is coming to you, Jesus is knocking. The preachings are his knocks. So if your heart is ardent, you will, the door will remain closed. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it has to do with the state of your heart. When your heart is opened, the door is open. When your heart is closed, the door is what? It's closed. Are you with me? And then before we go to the next question, before I came up, the Lord was telling me some things. You see, the same light that we Christians need to see it's the same light that the sinners will see and they will go blind. Are you there? So when we are studying the scripture, we pray for light. Are you there? Lord, I need light. I need light. For Christians, light helps them to see. For the unbelievers, the same light makes them go blind. So the difference is in who they have become. There are animals that does not work in the day. Are you there? Because there is something about what they have become. Their formation that forbids their movement in the day. So who you have become defines what the light becomes to you. Are you there? Paul saw the light. He fell. He went blind. Are you there? After some time, the same Paul wrote about 13 epistles in the scripture by light. Are you getting what I'm saying? How come what you saw that made you go blind is not what you are using to write? If you read the epistles of Paul, you will know a man that has caught the light is writing. But that same light made him go blind. So what you have become is what defines what the light becomes to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? All right. Question two. Yes. Okay. Praise the Lord. Okay. Amen. I said it has to do with the state of your heart. Am I right? When your heart is opened... The door is open. When your heart is closed, the door is what? The door is closed. Amen. Um, our brother is going to be a very good minister. Amen. Because one of the things I discerned about him is 
He wants to come to understanding. Are you there? That's how to follow God. You don't assume you know. It must be simple. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because the power of the gospel is in that simplicity. Are you there? So what does it mean for your heart to be open? An open heart is defined by the man's readiness to receive. So, a, you see, simplicity is what defines the openness of your heart. So, a man that is not simple is a man whose heart is not open. Simplicity is now what brings you to the point where you believe that God can speak to you through this vessel. You know, there are some people that when some people come up, they close their heart. Not this one. I'm waiting for the main minister. I got what I'm saying. So, that thing that makes you believe that the word of the Lord can come to you through this person whether you have, not, you have seen him before or not, is simplicity. And the moment you come to that point, your heart is open. You can now receive. Because the gospel is simple, so you will need to maintain simplicity to receive it. Are you there? That's it. I want to believe I've said that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes. Finally, how does one enter a personal relationship with God to unless his grace? To? Unless his grace. Okay, yes. Praise the Lord. How do you enter into a relationship with God to the point where you now begin to bear His weight? Are you there? Praise God. This is it. Bearing His weight is tied to your life of obedience. Anytime you obey God's word, you are bearing His weight. How? There are things that God will ask you to do that you naturally will not do. So your ability to bend to it because he said it is a proof that you are bearing his weight. So there are many things God will say you should do. You don't like it, but you are still doing it is a weight. If all you are doing is all that you like, there's no weight on you. There has to be something that you, sh- you would not have done that you are doing because he said it is a proof of a weight on you. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's it. Is that all? What's your name? Huh? What's, your name? <laughs> What's my name? Pastor Salem. Pastor Salem. Let's, let's go by that one. There are so many names, bro. <laughs> Amen. I hope we are done with questions. Okay. Glory to God.